So what do you want? Now, I know that sounds a really simplistic question, but it's one that a lot of people have difficulty answering. Because if you don't know what you want, how will you know when you've got it? And this is something that all too often gets overlooked because it's assumed that we already know this. How many motivational posters tell you things like, go after the one thing that makes you truly happy, or never give up on your dreams? Well, this is fine if you've always wanted to open your own restaurant, or if you've always dreamed of having your own rock band or some other really long-held ambition that you've always wanted to fulfill. But what if you don't know what you want from life? What if you have lots of different interests that are pulling you in different directions? In these cases, telling someone to seize the day and live their dreams just isn't all that helpful. What you need to do in these cases is prioritize and look for the things you can get from life that will make you happiest and tick the most boxes. Now, let's look at some of the ways that you can do that. Very often, what this comes down to is identifying the common themes in your dreams and objectives. Now, in other words, if you want to be 20 things, what are those 20 things have in common? So, if you want to be an actor and a rock star, what is it about both those things that makes them appealing? What does being a rock star have in common with being an actor? Well, the most likely answer is that both put you in the public eye and both are a kind of performance which can bring a certain amount of adoration. So, as long as you can tick all those boxes, you should be happy whatever you do. Another way to get to the bottom of what it is that you really want and to discover why you want it is to use the five whys technique. Here, you ask yourself the question why five times in a row in order to dig deeper and deeper into your motivations. So, let's say you want to be a famous novelist like J.K. Rowling or Thomas Hardy. Why? because you want to create something that you can be proud of. Why? Because you want to leave a lasting mark. Why? Because you respect and admire creative individuals who've done the same. Why? Because they can make a living by entertaining using only their imagination and their writing skills. Why does that appeal? because you love to write and to be acknowledged for your creativity. OK, now we're getting somewhere. Perhaps it's not being a novelist specifically that appeals to you, so much as being able to write and to get credit for your creativity. And this opens up a world of possibilities. You could be an article writer, or a screenwriter, or a newspaper columnist, or a blogger. You know, the list just goes on and on. Another way to find out what it is you really want is to look at your role models and see what it is about them that you admire. Which parts of their lives would you like to emulate? What do they have in common? Another tip is to look back at what you wanted to be when you were younger. Now, sometimes this will have no bearing because we can change an awful lot in a few decades. But in other cases, you'll find that whatever it is that you wanted to be back then still has some kind of appeal for you. Now, back then, you probably dreamed of being something much more ambitious and less realistic because, let's face it, we do all get a bit more cynical as we get older. And sometimes when you look back at what you wanted to do when you were young, you think, what a silly idea. But, you know, there might still be some sort of a nucleus of something that you could perhaps salvage from that. And does that same thing still excite you? Once again... Think of what it is about that thing that appeals and how you could realistically achieve the same end. For example, if you couldn't make it as a basketball player, perhaps you've got what it takes to be a coach. You're still involved in basketball, just in a different way. 
So think about what you want and then brainstorm your goals. Write them down and place them somewhere that you can see them. Then work backwards from your goal to where you are now. And this is very important. It's a very important technique to start with the end and then work back to the beginning because then you'll know exactly what you need to accomplish to get to the next stage. And you'll find it easier to stay motivated if you break your goals down into smaller goals that you can achieve easily. And once you've achieved one goal, you can move on to the next one until you've achieved your ultimate aim. Something that I personally have found very useful when trying to work through goals and trying to come up with ideas and brainstorming sessions and that sort of thing is to use mind mapping software. And the one that I like to use is called FreeMind and it is actually a free piece of software that you can download. And I can just see here on the uh, on the website they've got some screenshots that show you exactly how it works and what it all looks like and how you can work through the various uh, mind maps that you can use the software for. And you can find out more at freemind.sourceforge.net and you can download the software for free.